Now let's take a look at indeterminate forms and L'Hopital's rule. Situation, I would take a limit of a function over another function. We stick our limiting point in C. What comes out is 0 over 0 or plus minus infinity over plus minus infinity. We call these the indeterminate forms. Note, we're not talking about a non-zero number over zero. There, our answer is going to be plus minus infinity, or the limit will not exist. If I have zero over a non-zero, that's going to give us zero. So we're only talking about these cases right here. Now, if we're in this situation, the result is we need to do more work. They're indeterminate. What L'Hopital's rule does is give us another trick for doing more work. Let's take a look at the statement. I have f and g, differentiable functions on the interval a, b, except that possibly x equal to c. We're going to take a look at our limit of the quotient, and I get my indeterminate form 0 over 0. What I'll do is I'll compute the limit of f prime over g prime as x goes to c, that limit exists or is equal to plus or minus infinity, then that will be the same as our original limit. This will also work if we're using a one-sided limit or if our x is going out to plus or minus infinity. We're going to believe this. It should work for the simplest case, which will be when we have two lines. So let's suppose f and g are the equations of lines. I'm going to suppose we have our indeterminate form, so limit f over g goes to 0 over 0. And then I'm going to assume that the limit f prime over g prime as x goes to c exists. Since we're looking at two lines, I can write their equations down. We also want to get the indeterminate form 0 over 0. So when I put c in for both equations, I want 0 to come out. They're straight lines, which means they're continuous. So if I take their limits at any point, it's just going to be given by evaluate at your point. Put C into here, 0 comes out. C into here, 0 comes out. So we're good there. They're lines, so note if I push the M through, I get something of the form MX plus B for both. So these are definitely equations of lines. I'll assume M2 is non-zero. So that way, when we take the limit for the derivatives, I won't be dividing by zero in my final result. Let's take a look. I have, take the limit of my ratio. We write our equations in. And then we notice the x minus c's are going to cancel out. Limit of a constant, m1 over m2, is just some number. Limit of that, no matter what we take the limit to, is going to go to m1 over m2. Let's take a look at what the derivatives are. The derivative of f is just going to be, that goes away, m1. Derivative of g, same idea, it's going to give me m2. So m1 over m2 is also equal to the limit of f prime over g prime as x goes to c. So we note, L'Hopital's rule certainly works when we look at two lines. All right, let's do an example, and then we'll take a look at why this thing might be true. For my example, I'll take x squared plus x over x cubed minus x, and we're going to take the limit as we go to minus 1. Continuous, continuous, so I could try to evaluate it by sticking a point in. That's going to give me 0 over 0, so I need to do more work. The old way for doing this would be factor to the top and bottom, and then we'll cancel out all the common factors. When I do that, I get 1 over x minus 1. I put my minus 1 in, and then I'm left with minus a half for my limit. Using L'Hopital's rule, I have my indeterminate form, so I can use the rule f prime over g prime, evaluate it at our point. f prime is 2x plus 1, g prime is 3x squared minus 1. We put a minus 1 in there, that gives me a minus 1 over 2, or minus a half, and we see that that agrees with the old way. Before we do more exercises, Try to get an idea of why L'Hopital's rule is true. This won't constitute a real proof. It's just going to be a heuristic idea. It will make us believe it, and I'm going to simplify things a lot. But at the end of the day, if you want a real proof, you need a little bit more analysis. Okay. 
I have a lot of assumptions, so let's see what we need. I have f and g differentiable at x equals c. All this means is f and g have derivatives at x equals c. Or f and g have tangent lines at x equals c. Consequence of this is differentiable is going to mean continuous at c, which just means if I want to get the limit of f or g as x goes to c, I can just stick it into the function and evaluate limits come out. Okay, next assumption, f prime and g prime are continuous at x equals c. Again, that just means if I take the limit of f prime or g prime as x goes to c, I get the answer by just sticking c into the function, limit comes out. Third assumption, g prime of c is non-zero. This is just so that at the end of the day when I look at the f prime over g prime, my answer is not dividing by zero, and I actually get a number to come out. So that means that limit will exist, the quotient limit. So let's follow our nose. I'm going to have limit as x goes to c of f over g. And here's the biggest assumption of all. I'm going to assume that for purposes of what we're doing here, I can replace the functions by their tangent lines. Why would I want to do that? Well, that's kind of the whole point of calculus. If I want to approximate a function, we stick in its tangent line, and usually that gets us close enough to whatever we're trying to evaluate. So that's going to be assumption one. We can we'll have a tangent line to our functions at x equals c, and then I'm just going to use that equation in place of my original function. Now, with this in place, note that we're going to use the assumption 1a to get that f of c and g of c are equal to zero. Our indeterminate form says we get a zero over zero when we stick the points in. So by continuity, that's going to mean that the actual values of f and g at c will be zero themselves. Okay, that's good because then you notice the x minus c terms are going to drop out of the quotient. Leaving me with f prime of c over g prime of c. Now these are just numbers, okay, we don't know what they are because I don't have actual functions in here, but when you evaluate them, they'll be the slopes of the tangent lines. Okay, why do these exist? Well, one is we're differentiable, so that means f prime and g prime exist at c. And then by three, I'm not going to be dividing by zero here, so this is just going to be some number. Note, I can throw away the limit here because these, this is just a number, there's no x term in here, so it's really like that isn't there at all. For our last step, I'm going to go in the opposite direction we normally would. If I consider the limit as x goes to c of f prime over g prime, continuity, which I'm assuming in 2, is going to say I can get the value for this limit just by sticking c into each function, and if something comes out, well then that's your answer. So that lets me get from this step to this step, and then you notice this is what L'Hopital's rule says. If I want to figure out this limit, all I need to do is figure out this limit, and if it exists, I'm done. For another example, consider limit going x to infinity, 2x squared plus x plus 1 over 4x squared minus 6. So that's going to be infinite over infinite. So it's an indeterminate form. The old way we would do this is just to divide the top and bottom by x squared. That reduces the top to 2 plus 1 over x plus 1 over x squared over 4 minus 6 over x squared. And then we note as we go out to infinity, this anything over a power of x, positive power of x, is just going to go off to 0. So we lose all of our terms except the 2 and the 4, and I get a half. With L'Hopital's rule, what do we do? It's an indeterminate form. So I can take the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom. So that's going to give me a 4x plus 1 over 8x. We note I can divide 8x into each term. So it's going to give me my limit of 1 half plus 1 over 8x. And then 1 over 8x is going to go to 0, so I'm left with a half. Or Note that this answer here is also in an indeterminate form. This is going to give me an infinity over an infinity. 
so I can apply L'Hopital again. That's going to give me, take the derivative of the top is 4, derivative of the bottom is 8. So I'm just looking at limit of 4 over 8. That's a half. The limit just disappears, and we have our same old answer. So note, if you keep reproducing indeterminate forms, you can get to an answer that way. Sometimes those indeterminate forms will crank out more indeterminate forms till the end of time. So L'Hopital's rule isn't 100%. Let's look at one last example. Let's do limit as x goes to infinity of x over radical 1 plus x squared by the old way. What are we going to do? We're just going to absorb the x into the radical by turning it into x squared. Since our limit goes to infinity, we don't have to worry about minus signs since we'll be far out on the positive numbers. I can divide the top and bottom on the inside by x squared, and that'll leave me with a 1 over 1 plus 1 over x squared. Limits going to infinity. This is continuous, so I could push the limit to the inside. Then that's going to give me 1 over 1 plus, and then 1 over x squared goes to 0. So I'm going to have just 1 over 1 radical, which is 1. If I put the infinity into this, I'm going to have infinity over infinity, so the Hopital's rule applies. Derivative of the top is 1. The bottom is 1 plus x squared to the 1 half. So I drop the half, leave the inside, Exponent becomes minus a half, and then times the inside, which is 2x, derivative of the inside. Note, looking at these long enough, you might accidentally slip in a quotient rule. Quotient rule doesn't apply here. It's much simpler. f prime over g prime. When I clean the bottom up, the minus sign lets me push that term to the top, and then the bottom I'm going to have an x. And then you notice L'Hopital's rule really didn't help us at all here. It just moved the x and the radical x squared plus 1, it just interchanged and moved them from top to bottom. So sometimes that's what happens with L'Hopital's. It really doesn't help. Anyway, we could finish this by just dividing the x into each term, and then I'm just taking the same limit I took before with the radical 1 plus 1 over x squared going to 1. So it's kind of hit and miss, but definitely in your bag of tricks if you ever get an indeterminate form. 0 over 0, or any infinity over any other infinity.